In the days of the silent movies, Australia had its own thriving industry and we had our own movie stars. While America had Mary Pickford, Australia's sweetheart was Lottie Lyle. For most of her career, she lived and worked with Raymond Longford, the foremost director of the time. They made 28 films together. But Lottie was more than just a film star. She was a major creative force in their partnership. And behind their popularity and success was a story as moving and as dramatic as any they told on the screen. Lottie Lyle's spirited portrayal of the heroine had at moments our heart in our proverbial mouth. What's a proverbial mouth? Don't complain. He's tough. Who's complaining? Oh, no. It's only me. What is it, Mrs. Whittle? It's some of your fans. They're waiting outside. Tell them to come back later. Could you ask them to come back later? What was that, dear? I'd better go. What? Coming, Mrs. Whittle. Oh, hello, Billy. Hello, Mary. How's your mother? She's better. I want ten, all right? Ten autographs? Why? He sells them at school. Tuppence each. Oh, I see. Well, then I should get a percentage, shouldn't I? All right, ten percent. Fifteen. Billy! Come here. Come here at once. You know what I've come to ask you. And you also know the answer. Look, I know. I met her two years after you and I separated. None of this is her fault. If you were free, you could find someone else too. No, I couldn't. Well, I can't. You know that. I don't think God sets that many rigid rules for us. Why should he? We made promises before God. Was he present? I wasn't aware of it. I mean, no burning bushes, no walking sticks turning into serpents. You could talk all you like, Raymond. You can talk till you're blue in the face, but the answer's still no. Where's Frank? Will he be home soon? He's playing football till one. Then I won't wait. No, don't bother. He's only your son. Would you give him these for me, please? I'll send a check as usual next week. What did she say? As if I can't guess. What well, she always says. What's wrong with her? She doesn't even want you back, does she? Oh, I don't think so. She just wants the form. She wants the appearance. Doesn't matter if it's an empty shell. Why, Ray? Why is she like this? Doesn't she realize how futile it is? She doesn't care. As long as you observe the forms, you're all right with God. You'll get into heaven. Have you ever thought of going back to her? Don't be stupid. How could I?
going over there. My heart stopped. It literally stopped. Hello, Ma. Hello, Red. Oh, isn't she wonderful? She always is. Thank you. Did you like the film, Ma? As well as can be expected. Oh, what does that mean? Would you leave us alone for a minute, Louise? I'll be frank with you, Raymond. Oh, please. After Joseph died and you moved in with us, I thought you were a true friend of the family. Then when you made off with Lottie, I wanted to get a gun and shoot you. I know you did. Right between the eyes. Yes, well... Whatever she may let you think about these movies you make being enough for her, I know her. She needs a real home. She needs a husband and children of her own, a normal life. It's what I want to give her, more than anything. That's what I want. Marry her, Raymond. Make an honest woman of her. I'm trying to make that possible. And try harder. Good evening, Mrs. Whittle. Hello. How was it? Yes, they liked it. They loved it. They were all over her. So were you. My Mrs. Whittle. Too. <laughs> Good night. Good night. What are you doing? Just looking at it. Why? Trying to work out the things I did wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Oh, don't be silly. That's not what Mr. Sidney Morning Herald thought. Oh, I know that. But these heroines I play, they race around being heroic and they're all implacable virgins. It's got nothing to do with real life. Who wants real life? I'm not joking. I'm tired of this sort of thing. We should be doing something... something different. Why not? Here's a possibility. The world has got me snouted just a treat. Cruel fortune's dirty left has smote me soul. And all them joys a life I eld so sweet is up the pole. It's all in verse. Uh, J.D. Williams gave it to me. He said he thought we might be interested in view of our taste for authentic Australian subjects. Would J.D. put money into it? He said he wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Well, did it occur to you he might be right? On the other hand, it has sold 60,000 copies. What's it about? Well, the main character's this bloke. And he's a bit of a no-hoper. He spends his time getting drunk and playing tour. And then he gets to realise that his life's a bit of a waste of time, so he gets a job at the market, and that's when he sees her, Doreen. Well, that's what it's about. I don't know. A poem. Would I have to run around naked with wings on? Naturally. Well, I'll read it then. Love it. Let's do it. Hold on. It won't be that easy to raise money on it. It's a love story. A city story. They'll see. <sighs> yes, but as you so quickly pointed out, it's a poem. How do you make a film out of a poem? Oh, come on, Ray. You can see it, can't you? I don't know. I really don't. And when at last he shuts his little book, I heaves a sigh that nearly busts me vest. <laughs> But Evans, now here's mother going crook and sobbing awful on me manly chest. I wish she'd give them waterworks a rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Ray. How do we get the rights? Slow down. I don't think we can afford to just rush in. I do. Watch it. 
a story to it, is there? Yes, there is. It's a strong story, all about life and love and birth and death. <laughs> well, how about a runaway horse or something? She's on its back and he's got to save her. I don't really think it would work, Mr. Tarman. And I don't think the author would approve. Bring me a good melodrama and I'll give you a check. This one's not my cup of tea. Oh, don't look so down in the mouth, lass. There are other people here with more money than sense. Right, American chappy. An exhibitor or something, I believe. I'll introduce you around. Thank you. William. Ah, yes. <clears throat> My wife. William, why haven't you introduced me to Mrs. Longford? I'm so happy to meet you. Uh, actually, I'm Miss Lyle. Oh. Oh, I know Lyle's your stage name, of course, but I thought you and Mr. Longford... No, we're not married. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose things are different in your profession. Not usually, no. I'm a man, she's a woman. <laughs> I see. Well, I must go and check on the caterers. Not a bad woman, my wife. Conventional. Very conventional. Well, nobody's perfect. Try the yank. <laughs> I've seen a few of your films. You're a good director. The lady's got talent. My advice is, pack your bags, both of you, and try your luck in Hollywood. Hollywood, eh? It might take a bit of hanging about, knocking on doors, but you could wind up big names there. You mean we could have a chauffeur? A butler? A maid? Well, yes, the stars live very well. Oh, what do you think, darling? We could have a swimming pool. Everything we ever wanted. Why not two swimming pools, yours and mine? We were making films here when Hollywood was just a cow paddock. Maybe you're right for you, my friend, but you've got to face it. The lady may not have too many years in her. Time is short for movie stars. The lady has quite a few years left in her, thank you very much. But you're swimming against the tide here. But we're still swimming. Dear Mr. Longford, while we have been pleased to invest in your motion pictures in the past, in this case, we feel... That the sentimental bloke is not our cup of tea either. Thank you very much. Mm. We're running out of options. Mm. I've got 33 pounds in the post office. You could have that. Oh, that's very kind of you, Louise, but we need a little more than that, I'm afraid. <gasps> oh, I love this. Where did you get it? Oh, you can have it if you like. Um... Oh. No, I couldn't. Ma would know. What? That you'd been here? Uh, I'll be in the editing room. She thinks you might be a bad influence on me. <sighs> Perhaps she's right. I don't worry so much for myself. I don't worry about what people think of me, but... Aren't you happy? Yes. Yes, I'm happy. I love Ray. He's what I need. Look, I could have floundered around forever not knowing who I was or what I wanted. Come on. I'll walk you to the bus. <coughs> oh, Miss Lyle. Uh, it's a telegram for Mr. Longford. I, I was just trying to see if it was bad news. Thank you. Oh, I hate telegrams. All through these dreadful years, I've hated the sight of the telegram boy. I'd look along the street to see which house he was going into, and I'd go inside and pray, and I'd thank the Lord my son was too old for the service. You were so lucky Mr. Longford didn't have to go because of his war films. Yes, yes, very lucky. Thank God that's all over now. Oh, I hope it's not bad news. from Adelaide. Southern Cross Films agreed to put up £2,000 for the production of The Sentimental Bloke. £2,000? Oh, that's lovely then. It is to be paid £1,500 for the rights. And? And you must obtain his approval of the actor who is to play the bloke. If he looks like a powder puff, I'm in trouble. He won't look like a powder puff. The actor must be the same style of man, the same class as the bloke. 
I think Mr. Dennis should understand that our entire budget for this film is 2,000 pounds. Then you will clearly need a larger budget. I'm afraid that's impossible. The most we've been able to raise is 2,000 pounds. And our backer insists on being sole investor. That's not Mr. Dennis's problem. You are aware of the number of copies sold? The number of editions? Yes, we're aware. I'm sorry, we're not interested at that price. Love you. Ray! It's hopeless. We can't just let it go like this. There are some things you have to let go. There are other stories. But we need to make this story. I don't want to wind up looking like a fool. Egg all over my face with Southern Cross. You mind too much what you look like. It costs a certain amount of money to make a film. I know that. Flossie. I can bargain him down. No, Flossie! Five hundred pounds. If Mr. Dennis would extinguish himself for a moment. A thousand pounds, Lassie. Take it or leave it. We'll take it. <laughs> it's mad. It's completely mad. It's ridiculous. No, it's not. There's you and I to begin with. We don't have to pay ourselves. And Arthur Higgins will work for minimum wages. And if... What you propose, we live on. Soup. We'll be filming most of it in Woolloomooloo. There's a soup kitchen down by the wharves. Cast and crew can eat there. Ah, we can't make a film with soup. Soup, that's the answer. Come on, let's go see Arthur. Soup? I love soup. You're on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't take any notice of him. All right, all right, we're making the film. God, help us. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Our first problem is to find the man to play the bloke and get the author to approve of him. What's so hard about that? C.J. Dennis has an aversion to powder puffs. The sort of working-class man he wants to play the bloke doesn't take up acting. It's a middle-class profession. All right, let's just look through the photos. Tea? How are you, lovely? Feeling fine. You look skinny to me. Tight dress. Come on, you can't put it over me. You've got skinnier. You sound like Ma. Someone's got to look after you. Ray looks after me. Are you eating? Are you sleeping? Yes, eating, sleeping, everything. Well, you're not doing enough of either of them. I'll try harder. Promise me. What about John Moriart? His face is fairly rugged. He looks like a squatter's son to me. No, his father drove a tram. No? No. <laughs> you couldn't uh, persuade him of this, Mr. Mr. Dennis, could you? Ray's right. I've got an idea. I say, I say, I say. What's a pre-cut? I don't know. What's a pre-cut? About 30 bob a week. Hoi! <laughs> uh, excuse me asking, but does that uh, hair restorer really work? Does that hair restorer really work? You look tired. Yeah, last week, pulled the cork out of the You're water. You look very tired. Well, After 16 there, hours of vaudeville, wouldn't you? Hoi! There's a green-eyed yellow idol to the north of Catmull. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. You're not doing that right. I mean, I know I've been doing it for years. No, no, no. no. You're, you're not gesticulating. Gesticulating? I gave that up when I was 12. <laughs> if we had any sense, we'd abandon this. When Father Paper the Paul, are you punching him for paste? Dabbing it here, dabbing it there. Paste and paper everywhere. Mo stuck to the ceiling. The kids were stuck to the floor. That's him. I never saw How can you tell? Look at his face. So stuck up before. One more time. You couldn't see him for paste. A dabbing it here, a dabbing it there. Paste and paper his face. everywhere. Mo was stuck to the ceiling. The kids were stuck to the floor. I never saw a blooming family so stuck up before. <laughs> so
screen test. Look, you're sure you got the name right? You're not thinking of some other bloke? We just saw the show. Oh, yeah? Do you like it? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be polite. Well, the show wasn't... But, but you were wonderful, Mr Toucher. Hmm. Hey. And you still reckon you've got the right bloke? Yes, I really do. And you want me to play her, sweetheart? Yes. <laughs> What's the matter? I've been adding it up. All the costs are rising, especially the cost of film. So what are you saying? We can't make it. We can't risk making a film we can't finish. Now, come on, Ray. We've got to take a risk sometime in life. Life's too short. <laughs> Another opinion is that it's very long. We have to do what we want to do. My father never did what he wanted to and always regretted it. Follow your feelings. Don't go on and on like this. You don't fight fair. Why should I? Because you're an honourable woman. No, I'm not. No. What are you doing? Come on. Hmm? Say yes. Say yes. <laughs> Two thousand pounds will never get a better go at it. Come on. Is this what you want more than anything? To, to make this film? Yes. This is a very different kind of film from any we've made before. A special film. And it must be true to life and true to its people. It's a film of our people in our time. It's different. And because we're attempting something different, we mustn't fail. I'm going to distribute copies of the book. I want you to sleep with it under your pillow. I want you to soak yourselves in the atmosphere of its characters and the places they inhabit. Have a look at the backyard in this pub. What? The backyard in the pub. The one the bloke meets Ginger Mick. Come on. Come on, Paul. Um, excuse away. us, lovely. Just mm -hmm. come on. Away. Nice day. Yes. You're a nice looking tart. Softly spoken. Well dressed. What are you hanging around a place like this for? Well, I'm actually not yeah. hanging. I've got a mate of mine. He's got a Swiss place up the road. What say you and me go for a little drink? Look, I'm waiting on my friends. Look, Do you mind? You don't want to hang around with those weak bastards. You'll have a better time with me, love it, from this gentleman bothering you? No, Arthur, he was just leaving. You want to make me? Yeah, if I have to. Arthur, well, come Arthur, on. Arthur, don't! Now listen to me! There is absolutely nothing to fight over. You offered me a drink, I refused. That is my democratic right. Now, will you please leave us alone? You're late, Rodney. Come on. You bloody oh. little spitfire. You can have it, I don't... Sit down, Arthur. <laughs> but I've had a go at him, you know. Yes, I know you would. And then what, well, what do we do when we come to shoot a scene and our leading man's got a broken nose and a black eye? Can you see the problem? I suppose. All the same. All the same, nothing. Another drink? No. <clears throat> Come on, let's go. Is there anything the matter? Nothing. Just soaked up enough atmosphere. Everyone ready? Camera ready. Roll camera. The world has got me snouty, just a treat. Cruel fortune's dirty left has smoked me soul. And all them joys of life I held so sweet is at the pole. For as the poet says, me art has got the pip with yearning for... I don't know what. I seen her in the market, first of all, inspecting brooms at Steeny Isaac's store. I backs me barrer in the same old way and says, what ho? It's been a bonza day. How is it for a walk? Oh, holy wars, the sort of look she give me. Just because I tried to chat her, like you'd make a start with any time. Well, I don't know. 
It's that way with a bloke. The tarts that's hard to get makes you all hot to chase them and to let the cove called Cupid get an ammo lock and lose your block. Me pal, he trots her up and does the toff. He always was a bloke for showing off. This is Dory, he says. This is the kit. I dips me lid. I says, good day. And blimey, I had nothing more to say. And cut. One. You don't need this anymore, do you, Ma? Oh, now, wait a minute. She's bigger in the bus than you are around the waist. But if we open it out down here... Lottie! You can make it some material. You won't see that on the screen. I might have worn that. Oh, come on, Ma. You haven't worn it in five years. And we're flat broke productions, remember? Father used to like me in this dress. It's all in a good cause, Ma. I wish I thought so. Oh, now, look, don't start. How you got yourself tied to a married man with a Catholic wife is something I will never know. I'm just, just glad that your father... <laughs> you can mock. It would have saddened his declining years to see you in this position. And with no children. It saddens me. I couldn't help it, Ma. You know that. I fell in love. Then you should have fallen in love a little wisely. It'll work itself out one day, and I'll have a child. Children. But I won't make them suffer for the way things are now. I won't do that. If it wasn't for her, we could live better. She makes her own money. She doesn't need anything from me. Meaning I'm a bloodsucker? Would you just do one thing for me? Think again, please. Think carefully. No. Kiss me goodbye. What? I'd like the neighbors to see that I still have a husband. sort of dolls made out of delf stares out at me from off the mental shelf. I seem to sympathize with them there pups. I felt so stiff and brittle like myself. Got that? Okay. Now Doreen's ma. Her pa, she says, be late husband. Captain A and Corn Store. He'd no faults except him falling heavy off a load of chaff, which killed him. Struth, but how she wept. You weep. A studio. This life's full of little imperfections, isn't it? Lunch. Soup. Lunch. on the black side, right? Well, it's all right for you, Arthur. You can always work in newsreels. There'll always be newsreels. What about Lottie and me? Eh? Oh, if the worst comes to the worst, you can go to America. 
rather pick up garbage first. No, we have to make good films here. This one will be. It's a big risk, Arthur. Very big risk. Thank you. Right, let's get going. Everybody ready? Camera ready. All right. And... I think you should get in a lot closer. Closer on his face, the bloke. Less on me. No, of course you know what you're doing. You should be in closer. Um, as we were. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, just, just a minute, Arthur. I think perhaps we should be closer on the bloke, don't you? Good idea. Mm. I can give you about another four feet. Okay, lads. Okay. Four feet here. Whoop. Okay, good. Right. Camera ready. Ready. You frightened me. You all right? Mm, I'm just tired. Oh. You look very pale. Feel hot. Your hands are cold, that's all. You sure you're all right? You're not getting sick or anything, are you? Oh, stop yapping at me, Ray. I'm quite all right. Sorry. Didn't mean to yap. Well, I'll get up and cook us some dinner. I've still got the strength to open a tin of beans. Marty, for God's sake, forget about dinner. You've written the script, done most of the set dressing and half the costumes. Slow down. Which reminds me. Romeo split his tights. My God. Doreen and me, we've been to see a show. The swell two-dollar touch. Bong tong, you know. A chair apiece with velvet on the seat, a slap-up treat. The drama's Rippy Shakespeare years ago, about a balmy goat called Romeo. Him and his cobber, called Mick Curio, they have to go and mix it with that push of capulets. They look for trouble, and it's what they get. Quite natural, Romeo gets wet as hell. It's me or you, he yells, and with a yell, plunks Tibble through the gizzard with his sword. How high on cord. Put in the boot, I says. Put in the boot! Hush, says Dory. Shame, says some silly coot. Then things gets mixed a treat and starts to whirl. Here's Romeo, comes back and finds his girl tucked in a little coffin, cold and stiff. And in a jiff, he swallows Lysel, throws a fancy fit, head over turkey, and his soul is flit. Then Juliet wakes up and sees him there, turns on the waterworks and tears her hair. Dear love, she says, I cannot live alone. And with a moan, she grabs his pocket knife and ends her cares. Peanuts or lollies, says a boy upstairs. That was absolutely marvellous. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for a good day's work. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning at Balmain Church for the wedding scene.
good, doesn't it? It looks more than good. Was I right? Don't I have to say it? Yes, often. Yes, you were right, you horrible <laughs> woman. I've been told there are spots on my lungs. Spots on your lungs? Yes. TB? That's right. Is it right now? Well, and you're not to tell him. Promise me, Arthur, you won't, will you? I don't know. Then how would you expect him to finish this film? And the next one? <laughs> Marty, I don't want anything to happen to you. Neither do I. to a deed of gift, Melina. All the profits I make from this film for you and Frank. Why the sudden generosity? She wants a child. You've got a child. She wants a child very badly. And she won't have one unless we're married. For the child's sake. So that's the catch. The price tag. Divorce me, Melina. You have every cause. You'll be blameless. I want my son to have a father. I don't want to be spoken about as a divorced woman. Hello, Frank. Hi. Did you like the books? Yes. It's not enough, Raymond. What is enough? Nothing. Nice. Yes. Good. Yeah, thank you. Anyone? What do you think? Maybe when we're older, much older, we could buy a farm and you know, settle down. We could raise an orchard. You could make strawberry jam. I could, um, I could watch. <laughs> Would you really like that? I don't know. What about you? I don't think it suits either of us. God, you're a hard woman. I love you, Ray. Don't you ever forget it.
This evening I was sitting with Doreen, peaceful and happy with her day's work done. Watching behind the orchard's bonds are green, the flaming wonder of the setting sun. And every song I hear the thrushes sing, that everlasting message seems to bring. And every wind that whispers in the trees gives me the tip, there ain't no joys like these. Sitting at evening in this sunset land, with her in all the world to hold me hand, a son to bear me name when I'm gone, living and loving, so life mooches on. Congratulations, Mr. Thanks for everything. Are you looking for someone? Longford's wife finally gave in to his pleas, but it was too late. Lottie died of tuberculosis at the age of 34, just six weeks before the divorce was finalised. With Lottie gone, Raymond's career and personal life went into a decline. He never made another film to match the sentimental bloke. 